Hey guys and gals, Kevin DeSilva here. This is Living in Los Angeles, and we are committed to helping you make better decisions about moving to Los Angeles, moving around Los Angeles, or moving out of Los Angeles. We are back in the beautiful Marina Del Rey, and today we are focusing on what it's like to live in Marina Del Rey, the different areas, and what kind of housing is available for you. The good, the bad, and the not so ugly. So just to recap from our last video, Marina Del Rey is an urban beach town. What do I mean by that? Well, Marina Del Rey is on the water. It has three waters actually. It has the ocean, has the marina, and the Bologna Lagoon. And the best part about Marina Del Rey is, no matter where you live, you're a short distance from water. So right now we are on the Marina Penin Peninsula. And this is the most luxurious neighborhood in Marina Del Rey. Why do I say that? Well, the most expensive homes are here, of course. Now, the Marina Peninsula is surrounded by water and has water running through it. Um, you have the channel on the south side. You have the marina itself on the east side. The ocean behind me on the west side and in between me and the ocean right now is actually the Bologna Lagoon. So some key characteristics about the peninsula that are really important to take into consideration. One, the peninsula is the most isolated. You're at the tip of a peninsula uh, that creates the Marina Del Rey Marina. Now, with that isolation, well, comes fewer people bothering your setup, which is what makes it probably the most suburban. Now, you're surrounded by water. On one side, like I said, you have the marina. You have the lagoon, which is right behind me. And then behind those homes are the beach. Now, we just closed on 118 Voyage Mall over here. It's a $4 million house. And the reason that they bought here was because of how secluded it is. Now, I told you I'd share the good and the bad. So here's the bad part. When you're trying to get out of the peninsula, especially at rush hour traffic, Washington Boulevard can be a mess. You can go around on Admiralty, um, especially if you're heading to the south. But even then, it still gets backed up. And getting out of the marina can be difficult, especially for the peninsula. The Marina Peninsula is peaceful, it's tranquil, and it's surrounded by water. It's got restaurants, apartments, homes, condos. Let me show you. So we're gonna take a look at the peninsula, what kind of homes there are, all the different types of homes that there are, including multifamily properties. So let's take a look. Marina Del Rey is broken into a few areas, and as you'll see as we progress through the video, right now we're in the peninsula. In the peninsula is generally speaking this area right here, Marina Peninsula. It is adjacent to uh, the Venice Pier and the Venice Canals. In fact, <clears throat> the Bologna Lagoon is the feeder for the Venice Canal. So, uh, you know, just kind of make a note on that. Now, I'm going to highlight the peninsula itself. So the peninsula speaking is generally this part here. It is a peninsula that sticks out. It creates the north side of the channel. The south side of the channel is created by uh, Playa del Rey, um, particularly the jungle. Uh, the Playa del Rey and Marina del Rey create the channel where boats come in for Marina del Rey and the rest of the harbor. <clears throat> that said, as you can see here, uh, rolling through the different homes. So as you can see, this is actually a lease. It's on hold. Uh, agent error happens all the time. <laughs> so condos start in the peninsula around a million dollars. There are some fixers that can come up below a million dollars. But generally speaking, if you want to be this close to the water, um, it an entry level condo is going to run you at least a million dollars. <throat> you can get the other side of the marina for under a million dollars, including two bedroom condos. Uh, but here in the peninsula, this is generally speaking 
the entry level for the area. And they quickly escalate. As you can see, we're moving up condos continuing to be in the million one, million two, million three. Um, client of mine bought a, a home on Privateer west of the Bologna Lagoon, about two blocks from the beach for a million three fifty back in the beginning of 2022. Uh, they've done some work to that particular unit and that unit is well worth the, in the million four range today. <clears throat> that said, as we head down, uh, prices just continue to rise. Once again, we're still looking at condos. We're still looking at townhomes um, in the area. And now we start to see, now this particular one is a townhouse, but they jump. So the this one is also a townhouse, really close to the water. This one is, I mean, it's all close to the water perspective. I know we're here in Los Angeles, we're a little tainted on the idea. Um, you know, I grew up a mile from the beach when people ask me, do I live close to the water? I can't see the water. So am I close to the water? <laughs> but you know, if you're sitting in Utah right now, watching this video, uh, you would definitely laugh at us because we are close to the water. Uh, that said, uh, townhomes start to spring into the $2 million range. Nice, full size townhomes, um, you know, around 2000 square feet and up and just continue to move north from there. Um, here, condo, condo. Now we get into the cheapest single family homes in the area. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, we recently helped a client buy a $4.1 million home in this area. Um, so this one's on Roma Court, $3.1 million, and they just continue to rise. This one, 3.1. Here, this one is a condo on the ocean, 3.3 uh, almost. Privateer Mall, uh, now across from a client that bought on Privateer. So they're actually two different streets. Uh, 3.3 again through 3.5 and they just continue to go up in the most expensive property in the neighborhood uh, which we will get to over here 6.25 <clears throat> is going to be this one um, this one's on the water it's 15 and a half million um, it's basically like a strand house for those of you who are familiar with the Manhattan Beach area uh, Marina Del Rey does have a very strand like vibe on the front there's a walking path the bike path is the walking path in that section um the second highest sale or uh home for sale is 9.5 enough about the prices of homes in this area let's go check out the venice pier so this main stretch right here is the venice pier it's pretty loud so i'm gonna turn around but i wanted to feature it because it's the most fun in marina del rey it borders marina del rey venice to my right Marina Del, Del Rey to my left. I'm here featuring it. Not really any houses, except for on the peninsula, but it's the most fun. So behind me is the Marina City Club. It's a landmark of Marina Del Rey. It's a luxury apartment complex and also condominium complex. However, unlike most condos here in Los Angeles, this one is on a land lease. So although the prices look really low, it's because the land lease and the HOA fee add up to a large chunk of change. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the properties. These are gonna be the cheapest condos in the area. I am gonna show you the HOA fee and the land lease. I think this is very important to understand when you're considering buying a property in Marina City Club. Um, so I'm gonna turn the screen. So this is Marina City Club and we will get to Marina Point later in the video. Um, as you can see, I'm heading east. Next in the video, we'll get to Oxford Triangle. That said, here is Marina City Club. I'll put my first point too far. And these range in price. You have little one bedrooms that sell for 447,000. They're on the market. Um, these typically take a little longer to sell. They are on land lease, so they require special types of financing. Um, certain lenders who lend to land lease it's kind of like when you have a uh what what do you say like co-ops there are very few co-ops there are very few buildings in los angeles on land lease in the area i'm aware of this one 
uh, one in Brentwood, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, it's there aren't many buildings with land lease. I do know that in Harbor City there are some, San Pedro there are some, and in Long Beach there are some. Once again, these are very rare. Most condo buildings are on owned land, and the HOA owns the land. Um, so you have everything from $499. Now, something to explore here is you have this $915 a month HOA that does not include your land lease. You have HOA fee one, and then you have HOA fee two, which one of these is the land lease, one of these is the amenities. Now, the amenities here are great. Um, this listing, unfortunately, does not have all the amenities, uh, but I do know all the amenities. Um, let me stop the chair real quick, just so I can talk about them. So you have guard gate. You, there are two gates that you can enter in through. Both of them are guard secured. Um, then uh, inside, I mean, there are restaurants, you have room service, um, you have a, a fully remodeled gym, you have a pool deck, you have direct access to the marina itself. Um, you know, I already mentioned the restaurants. You have on site, there's a contractor who's familiar with the building. So he does a bulk of the renovations because he understands what the building wants. So when you want to renovate, you can hire him. You can hire other contractors. Um, just know that they, you know, have to know what they're getting into, um, you know, to help make sure that the neighbors aren't affected by any errors in work. That said, um, it's really, this particular building, Marina City Club, if it weren't for the land lease and the fewer options for lending, this would actually be one of my favorite buildings. However, because of the land lease and the more limited options for lending, um, this just doesn't stand out. I don't see them appreciate at the same level as the other condos in the area, but these can be a cheaper alternative to getting into Marina Del Rey and living a very luxurious lifestyle. Let's go back to this just real quick so that I can finish off looking at what's the, here we go. So as you can see, as we move up, a lot of one bedrooms on the market right now. Then we get in uh, this three bedroom, 699. Um, and it depends on what building you are. Here, you could be in a building that faces away. You can be, uh, be in, in a building that faces the marina. Obviously the marina side is gonna be more expensive. Uh, for instance, two and three bedrooms sell for mid 800 range. We're in the 730 range. Um, moving up, moving up, moving up. <clears throat> now the penthouses do sell for quite a bit. This one is on the market for a million eight fifty. Um, they are very large. We're talking about 2,850 square feet. And this penthouse right here is on the market for 2,350. Uh, this is a 3,092 square feet foot penthouse. Now you see what I'm talking about. Let's walk back to the car and head over to the Silver Triangle. So here we're in the Silver Triangle, otherwise known as the Oxford Triangle. It's a little neighborhood, some people call it Venice but that's mainly because Venice sells better as a name, is really Marina Del Rey, and I love Marina Del Rey, so I think Marina Del Rey sells better as a name. So here we're in the Silver Triangle, otherwise known as the Oxford Triangle. It's a hidden gem inside of Marina Del Rey. Why do I say it's hidden? It's tucked away by the intersection of Washington and Lincoln. Uh, there's only a few ways out of the neighborhood and likewise into it, um, and you can only get in off of Washington. They block the roads off of Lincoln so that people don't cut through. It does, however, connect via walking. So if you want to walk out to Brennan's or to the grocery store, you can do so. If you want to walk across the street to the Ritz-Carlton, that's also available. But you cannot drive through, which can make it a nuisance getting out sometimes. It's probably the only bad thing you're going to see around here. But... It is probably the best kept secret in all of Marine Del Rey. So let's talk about the Golden Triangle. And I do apologize. I did reference it earlier as the Silver Triangle. It is across the way in Venice. This part is the Golden Triangle. I'm going to share my screen so we take a look at what homes are selling in this area. So, uh, as of, sorry, as of right now, um, you have 
two condos on the market. These are on Princeton Drive. Though part of the Golden Triangle, otherwise known as the Oxford Triangle, and that's what the Homeowners Association calls themselves in the area. Uh, you know, you have Stanford homes basically start around the 1.5 to $1.6 million range for fixers. Um, and they quickly escalate. Um, this is one of my favorite neighborhoods in Marina Del Rey. What I like about it, which I've already mentioned, is its privacy. There's only three ways in. Um, it's walkable. You can walk to the Venice Pier. You can walk and get bagels. You can walk to all the shops on Admiralty. And uh, also, you can walk to um, you know Brennan's, IHOP, uh, Costco, in and out I mean, it, it, this is honestly my favorite there's only a few there are only a few condos in the area they are building other homes right now um but i believe these homes are going to be made available in some capacity for affordable housing that said um these quickly go up you have one more set of uh, one more condo but it is predominantly single family homes in this neighborhood um you have some older homes you have some brand new homes and then uh, these are the only track homes in here so far. And as you can see, very nice new homes like this one, $3.2 million, $3.9, and that pretty much caps out. I mean, it's, it is a luxury neighborhood, but that is, that is a very good example of the prices here in Oxford Triangle. So let's take a look. I <laughs> had to make a pit stop on the way to Marina Point. And the reason being is behind me is the world famous Brennan's. Brennan's known only for the turtle races. It is an Irish pub, has great food, but is well known for its nightlife. Thursday night, Brennan's is the place to be. Another hidden gem of Marina Del Rey just so happens to be next to the Golden Triangle, otherwise known as the Oxford Triangle. But we are standing in, on Marina Point Drive, and Marina Point Drive harbors the three, in my opinion, best condominium complexes in all of Los Angeles. I know it's a big statement. I'll show you why in the photos. But behind me, you have the Regatta. Next to me, you have the Cove. And in front of me, you have the Azura. And as I mentioned, Marina Point is my favorite luxury condo building in all of Los Angeles. Not that all of Marina Del Rey isn't luxury. Um, it is. It's a luxury neighborhood. However, this building really has it. You know, you have 24 hour security. Um, you have front door, front concierge in your building. Um, the indoor outdoor gyms. Um, some of the buildings have screening rooms. Some have on movie theaters there's conference rooms and one of the best parts about it at least last time i checked is that these amenities are made available to the residents at no additional cost which is amazing because in other areas like playa vista they have similar amenities but you do have to rent them so let's go ahead and dive in to the homes that you can expect so the marina point we've already explored uh, marina peninsula marina city club Oxford or Golden Triangle. And here we are in Marina Point. Marina Point is three buildings, like I mentioned, the Azura, the Regatta, and the Cove. Let's open these up. So uh, they do have one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. However, the Azura does not have any three bedrooms, although it has some extremely large two bedrooms, that is to be noted. The Azura is the 13700 building. Um, and one thing I, I I absolutely love, so we're going to go up here to a very tall building. Um, this one's somewhat interior. So this one's an interior view. Let's go over here to an ocean view. <clears throat> so this one's a one bedroom. This one's a city view. But one of the things I love, so there's an upstairs fire pit area with barbecues right there. This is on the top floor. This is the roof deck. Um, and then on the other side of the roof deck, you have not featured here, the hot tub, which I will find you. This is the pool deck down 
um, at in, you know, just above entrance level. So there, there's an indoor outdoor gym. Yeah, we'll find so the premier units in the Azura. This is a two bedroom, two bathroom. Like I said, 1,724 square feet. It was built in 2003 um, and the Regatta was built in 1999. Now the Azura does have the, the lowest HOA fee because of how many more units there are. It has almost twice the amount of units in the building as the Cove and the Regatta each have. And for that, the HOA fee is significantly higher in the Cove and the Regatta. However, there is no movie theater in the Azura in the Cove. Either the Cove or the Regatta has a movie theater. Um, they each are a little bit different, although all three buildings are right next to each other. Each HOA hat offers different things, like the Azura does not allow you to get valet parking, whereas the Cove allows you to get valet parking. So when people visit you at the Azura, your guests get valet parking for free. Obviously, you can tip, um, whereas at the other buildings, you can get valet parking. This is a beautiful unit and just a clear example of the kind of work that you get, the privacy, how nice it is. You can see the Santa Monica Mountains, Century City. Being on the seventh floor, you're actually overlooking the other buildings. But this is the indoor outdoor gym I'm talking about. It is absolutely amazing. Um, it's, it's a great facility. There are three training areas. Um, that's what makes it one of my favorite. Move in here, cut your gym membership, work out at home. <laughs> here is the rooftop deck on the other side. So this is on the south side. You have a hot tub overlooking the marina all the way out to Playa del Rey, watching the planes take off. Absolutely one of my favorite favorite spots can't wait to be here again so right now we're off of Glencoe uh, this is actually one of my favorite parts of all the Marine Del Rey don't get me wrong I love Marina Point super walkable has the Ralphs next door um, another shopping center that we'll preview another time when we look at restaurants and such but what I like about here is one it's the most affordable of Marina Del Rey which by standard is still luxury, but it's the most affordable. You have the townhomes over here in front of me. There are four or five different townhome communities on this side of the freeway, on this side of the 90. Um, to the left, you have the newer condo buildings. Now, these ones are great entry level. They rent really well, and most of them are built in the 2000s um, and with some of the more recent ones built just a few years ago. Now, they're building more, as you can see, behind me. But uh, what I love about this area is just how walkable it is. You have a movie theater over here on my right, a bunch of different restaurants, including Ruth Chris, Rubio's, my favorite fish tacos, Coffee Bean, Jamba Juice, Pavilions, it's a grocery store just a lot going on and that's why I love this part off of Glencoe. Let's take a look at some houses and the different kinds of properties you can expect to see here. All right, let's check out Glencoe. Now Glencoe is east of Lincoln. Uh, it's east of the 90 as well. Glencoe is a main street that cuts through. It doesn't actually go all the way through. It wraps around um, to Alla Road. Alla Road does cut all the way through. It is a road that you can take from Mar Vista in Marina Del Rey, cutting through to Culver Boulevard to be able to access the 90. However, uh, right around Glencoe, you can turn in on a few streets in order to get traverse over to the 90 freeway, and the 90 freeway will take you out to the 405. Um, you can also get over to Culver Boulevard by taking that, that on-ramp road. Um, it does split to go up to the freeway and then goes down also to Culver Boulevard so that you go to the beach, Playa del Rey, Manhattan Beach. Oh, it's one of the things I absolutely love about Marine Del Rey is just how easy it is to commute around. But we're here to look at the neighborhoods and 
the homes. So let's get moving on this. <laughs> All right. So the Glencoe area is traditionally east of Lincoln and uh, west of Redwood. So uh, Marine Del Rey technically stops at Redwood. Um, it is the 90292 zip code. Um, so I drew a little map here, as you can see. It stops at Redwood until Maxella at Maxella, and then goes east. And here at Mended now, this is where you can link up with the 90. And from the 90, you can hit Culver Boulevard. Um, there are a few different. So here, north of Maxella, the, um, the homes are generally newer. These are condos, and I'll show you. Um, these are condos. This is my favorite building, which I've mentioned before. Um, it is the only building on Glencoe that has a security in the front. It is not 24-7. However, um, it is a secure building. Um, this particular property um, has some of the nicest units. It is one of the newer buildings in, on Glencoe. Um, all the buildings on Glencoe are traditionally newer typically built from the early 2000s and up. This particular building here was built in 2016, making it the newest for now. Um, you also, this building was built with electric car chargers um, and the ability to install electric car chargers for your parking space, which makes this building even better. This building has a heated pool, indoor outdoor gym, a rec room, also, also has coffee in the lobby. So, um, well, up above from the lobby but anyway uh, you access it from the lobby this particular level parking and um you have obviously here's the gym um so a lot of lounge space um barbecue area fire pit this is a lounge inside the lobby uh, there's an upstairs lounge as well um also known as the sunset deck um here's the pool so all in all, just a great area to be. Um, you do overlook a parking lot. So there's still quite a bit of industrial in the area as each one sells. Typically they tend to build an apartment building or a condo building. So um, although your view is available now and from the top floors, you can see the Santa Monica mountains. Um, if this parking lot, which this parking lot might not go, um, it is a public tow yard where they tow your car if you were to be parked in the spot, let's say on Lincoln during rush hour or something. But that said, um, uh, that's probably not going anywhere. But if the next building over were to go, it very well could go to a developer as well. That's just an, uh, a glimpse into the newer ones on Glencoe. And there's loft style, there's traditional style, there's newer ones, there's a little bit older, though still new. And let's go over to the original. Now these are predominantly townhome style. Um, these ones on Redwood are uh, condos, um, and some of these are gated, some are not, some have guards, some are not. Uh, this one in particular has a guard gate, uh, but the other ones, like over here off Mindanao, these ones do not. These are gated access. Um, now, some of the street level ones don't require any gates in order to enter. Um, traditionally, these ones are built in the later 70s. Uh, we'll go to La Via Marina to see the ones that were that predated these ones, um, that many of them were built by the same developer. So as you can see, a lot of different variety, a lot of different styles here on Glencoe and around the 90 freeway east of Lincoln. Now, this building behind me is my favorite. I showed you a few of the sales. Why it's my favorite is, well, because they have a front desk person. It's the only staffed condo complex here outside of like maintenance people. Um, they have a pool, they have a great gym, they have a hangout area, barbecue area, and upper level decks. And my favorite, coffee in the lobby. So we are in the Via. Most people refer to this area as La Via Marina. Um, each of the different complexes are named Via. There's Via Marina at the opening, and then in front of me, Via St. Topez, uh, Via St. Thomas. But 
Uh, what is magnificent about this area is these are the original. So these are the townhouse condos that were built here in Marina del Rey. Uh, they're right off the 90 freeway. Um, on the other side of the 90 freeway off of Glencoe, they continued on. Each of those complexes are bigger. And as you see, will see, um, I'll show you the difference between the two. Typically come with, on the east side, they definitely come with pools and jacuzzis. On this side, some of them don't have jacuzzis. But um, these ones were mostly built in the 60s and 70s, and the other side was built mostly in the 70s and 80s. So these ones are a little bit older, but these are the original. And one thing I do like about this side of the freeway is the different communities can be unique. So they have different roof lines, uh, different floor plans. Now the downstairs typically does look the same. However, the upstairs are completely different. You have ones that had sunrooms that people have enclosed. You have other ones that have, uh, you know, the sunrooms in the middle. Other ones have sunrooms or balconies in the front that people have enclosed. A lot of modifications have taken place in this part of Marina del Rey that are really helping make this place unique, much more unique than when it was built. Now the transition between the Glencoe area and the Marina area is La Villa Marina. Now La Villa Marina is composed of a number of different streets, but the main entrance is called La Via Marina. And as mentioned, a number of the complexes in the area have part of that name in their own names. So let's take a look at the different homes in the area. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over to uh, customer short. So uh, the cheapest home in the area currently is around 1.2 million. And that is the reality that um, although it's a two bedroom, you could potentially convert it to a, a three bedroom. Um, a lot of one really cool thing about the Glencoe older homes, townhomes in particular, and the La Via Marina uh, older homes is that so many people have made them their own. They've taken middle sunrooms and turned them into full-on rooms. They've taken their front balcony sunrooms and extended their master bedroom forward so that they get more space, um, allowing them to then convert other parts into bigger closets. You name it, I've seen it. It's really a cool area with a lot of character um, and each unit is slightly different. Now I am partial. I do like these. I've helped clients buy two of these. Um, they are amazing homes. I think they're, they're so you come in, they're split level. So you have the living room, then they go up one little set of stairs. You usually have your half bath either off to the right or over behind. Um, it just depends on your floor plan. Um, then you have your dining room and your kitchen. Um, so many people have done so many different things with them. Like for instance, here, this is, is going to be entry level. It's going to be a fixer. It's going to be very traditional, but your kitchen is the first thing you see. Um, and then you're going to get, you know, some of the nicer homes like over here where for 1.5 million, the kitchen's all very well done. Um, dining room, that's, and this, see that front area right there? Those used to be balconies, some used to be sunrooms. And so people have converted those into being part of their home in order to make like an upstairs office and stuff like that. So this is a perfect example of just that. And they've remodeled the other rooms as well. Um, really hard to, to orient just in the photos. It would take like a virtual tour, but um, you know, for the, nicer ones where they've turned that middle sunroom that used to be there on some of these units into a bedroom. Um, those ones, it's really hard to see from photos. Like I said, you have to be in a virtual tour in order to see it. Hey, look, there's somebody in the, oh my gosh, some agent's marketing is just ridiculous. I gotta say it. It is, and no wonder it's taken a, almost a year and still not sold. <laughs> Here's a great house. And so because every owner most owners have remodeled their place you just get so many different styles like for instance here how it opens up um the kitchen some the kitchen is a little tucked away um dining room still in the same location uh but for many of these they opened up this used to be walled so they would have opened it um one of my clients they bought the kitchen wrapped around so just really cool stuff this is the powder room downstairs and then they have different roof lines as well. So, I mean, I just gotta say that, you know, the homes in this particular pocket are, they're crafty. And when you get a good one, I mean, A, they preserve their value. I mean, like 
you know, people continue to buy these. They're very central, you know, from here, you can walk west, you can walk east. I mean, all of Marina del Rey is just very walkable. And that wraps up our neighborhood tour of Marina del Rey and the many different aspects of each of the neighborhoods and the characteristics and the type of homes you can expect to see. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications so that you could be the first to see our next tour. See you next time.